Now then everybody, it's Dan from Home Seek. So, just wanted to quickly make this video simply because every time I've been putting up a behind the neck press training session, I get the same comment over and over and over and over again by several different people. And to be honest, just getting fed up of uh, having to reply the same thing. Uh, behind the neck press has long been regarded as the forbidden exercise by many people. I think it comes into the same boat as uh, behind the neck pull downs. Yeah, which I would probably agree, behind the neck pull downs are pretty fucking terrible, to be honest. You can't do as much, and the range of motion's terrible, and I don't like them, so I would agree with you on that one. Uh, but behind the neck press, everybody says that you shouldn't do it, it's bad for your rotator cuffs, you're going to fuck yourself up, you're going to snap yourself up, blah, 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 blah. Now, most people know from following this channel that I don't overly give a shit about studies or what somebody says and what somebody else says or what anybody says. I always like to just see what it feels like for me. I always encourage people to try things for themselves because we are not all one size fits all. Everybody's different. And this is definitely the case when it comes to behind the neck presses. The main problem occurs from behind the neck presses depends on the type of person and what type of scapula they have. They are, I'm gonna put a link in the description box uh, which is going to show you the different types of scapula and the, the main per well the main type of person that's going to have problems with doing behind the neck presses is somebody that has a hooked scapula basically gives no room for the rotator cuff to wiggle about and do these things you're putting yourself through that range of motion and basically you become limited and that hooked scapula will press into the um, the doofer in there I can't remember the name but that link will show you uh, so when it gets all inflamed up and sore, you're going to end up cutting into it, getting turned, and you'll be in a lot of pain. Now for me, uh, obviously most of you know that's been following the channel, I haven't been able to bench properly for, must be coming up to a year now, let's be honest. Uh, I had loads of problems with uh, my shoulder, this one particularly, not being able to bench, too much pain, uh, lying on my shoulder was agony, uh, just sleeping all night, I, I was unable to go through full external rotation. Um, but now literally I can really push my elbows forward never used to be able to do that literally my the limit of my external rotation used to be about here before I started doing this even with a uh, massage and you know like foam rolling stretching that that was the limit and now I can literally get all the way back and push back and I couldn't do that before so what I'm saying is is that I was using this, started off with the, the light weight, the bar just wiped my way up and it has improved my external rotation. I'd also say that I probably have a bit of an imbalance in the rear of my shoulders. My uh, rear delts probably didn't get as much love as uh, the front did because I do a lot of pressing. Um, back when I wanted to do the whole bodybuilding sort of thing, it, people might remember that I used to do a lot of uh, dumbbell work and I think that sort of kept me in check it kept the balance and then when I said oh, all I want to do is the cube method now I sort of fucked all that shit off and I just focused on the main stuff and I think that is where a lot of the problems started to come in and everything got tight at the front so that could have been a cause but like I say I've been doing these now for this is the second cycle of Wendler so I've been doing them for over a month and my shoulder is just getting better and better and better and better I have literally no pain in my shoulder anymore Benching feels great. I can sleep on it on a night and I don't get no problems. So, although everybody says behind neck press, it's going to snap you up, it's going to make you, uh, it's going to wreck your shoulder, blah, blah, blah. It obviously doesn't do that to every specific person. This is actually helping my shoulder out. You know what I mean? In before, two months down the line, my arm snaps off and everybody points and laughs. But what I'm trying to say is that just because it says, like, just because that myth has floated around. It doesn't apply to every instance, you know what I mean? You've just got to look a little bit further than that. Everybody used to say that about the fucking anabolic window, you know? If you didn't get your protein shake in within 30 minutes of training, that was it. All your fucking gains lost. But everybody knows that that's bollocks now. So it comes down to how you do the exercise, what type of person you are, whether your scapula is hooked or not, is going to increase your risk of impingement. So really, you, you need to... Need to look into that. So, but check that link out below. Give it a good look. It's not, it's not a bad little read, to be honest. It gives you a bit of a an insight. But one of the most important things you got to remember when doing behind the neck press is really to get proper external rotation 
and really try and force your elbows forward and that gives your shoulder a little nice support and you can press you know no problems just be aware of it don't as you're pressing don't let your elbows flare back because that is going to cause some fucking snappage I keep missing the bar there bit of a blooper there anybody remember Only Fools and Horses 